Welcome to another episode of Honk. I'm your host, David Blue, and today I'm in the 2014 Car of the Year in Latvia. My name is Blake. Tool salesman. Knives. It's the Nissan Juke, the Nismo Juke. Nissan took the Juke and gave it to their performance division, Nismo, and I honestly can't imagine what Nismo said. Cool. Thanks. What do we do now? Switch up. They upped the horsepower, a lot of horsepower. They, they put a turbocharger on the little 1.6 liter in line four. It's still a little bit hefty at 3,100 something pounds. This particular model has the CVT transmission and all wheel drive. You can get it in a manual, but with the manual, you can only get it in front wheel drive. But of course it's a Hawk review. Before I talk about anything, I've already said too much. We've got to go to the key fob. This honestly reminds me of a cough drop lozenge. All right. so. Not putting any keys in because we don't need a key because we've got the cough drop. The interior is its very chunky. It's very well made like, like plastics, lots of big heavy plastics. Like um, those Mattel toy cars, the red car and then the yellow roof and they always smell like urine. Okay, I'll get moving. I'll actually start the car. Okay, I'm not starting it up yet because I got these vents have got this thing that you, it's got this thing. Like there's a place to put your thumb. That's really cool. It is. Have you actually seen the push button start on other Nissans? No. Oh God, it's got off. That key fob is universal on like all Nissans I've ever done on the lot. So with that key fob, I could walk into, I could get into any Nissan. That's a joke. That was a joke. Sorry. I know, but like <laughs> they all look the same, but like on some Nissans, it, it looks like you, you see like that. Yeah. It's like, it looks like a key, but there's just this giant gray block instead. And you just twist it really hard. And if you don't twist it hard enough, it doesn't start. Just imagine that. It's, it's it just really sound, disgusting. It doesn't looking. sound very fun at all. It looks cheap as hell. So, I'm going to put my foot on the brake. And then the car says, I'm ready to fucking get down. I'm ready to get restrained. Push the key. Lots of lights come on. The gauges do that cool thing where they're like, because <laughs> they're testing the gauges, you know. It's just like a Pontiac. Uh, my navigation starts up. There's this... It, everything's very toyish in here. I've got a, got a toy center console and then a toy navigation unit and then a toy boost gauge and a toy G meter. I think I'm going to turn on the G meter. Drive info. G force. No units or anything. There's just a graph. I'm going to grasp this big chunky gear shift lever and put it down in the dick. It's got this red thing that's supposed to tell you where the steering wheel is because there's not enough steering feel, you wouldn't know. I have to use this thing all the time, even on the highway. Downside, I'm gonna start off with a downside in this car. The ride, even in normal mode, is kind of busy. It's, it's, you know, it's been a while since I drove a Golf GTI, but I don't remember it being quite this busy. And that is actually competition in this thing, believe it or not. I'll explain the acronym. CVT stands for Continuously Variable Transmission. So, you're welcome. And what that is, basically, is there are like two pulleys and then there's a belt between the two pulleys. And one of the pulleys can get bigger. And it, that's increasing the gear ratio. Uh, yeah. See, the, the last time that I actually researched CVTs, that's what they were. I want to say that this one's probably not that, or at least it's a little bit more complicated than that. Because this has simulated gears. Right, and you're laughing. I was laughing. However, you just move this gear shift lever over to the left. This is a familiar thing, right? And it gradually goes into the nearest simulated gear using the proper direction. So back for down, forward for up, because it's none of that pretentious. This is a racing car. The funny thing is, it shifts much quicker than any traditional automatic that I've driven. And that's really funny. I don't know 
how well it would it would stand up if I was really pushing it, but it's impressive, honestly. The only other Nissan product that I've ever driven was an Xterra. A friend and I took a Nissan Xterra on a, about a two hour drive to go get a dashboard for his Miata. We rented it, and I was so impressed with that thing. Not, it's not thrilling, it's not exciting. Ooh, it's a limo. But it is exactly what an SUV should be, and it's I, it's more SUV than any other SUV on the market right now. In that rear wheel drive, big, utilitarian, chunky, no bullshit V6 up front, and you know, regular old automatic transmission. I should mention that tonight is actually New Year's. There's The numbers went up, let's see, it's 2, 2 a.m., so we're two hours into 2015. That's especially relevant, given that, well, Latvia is going to have to ch choose a new car of the year next year. Will it be this again? Who knows? I don't even know what Latvia is, and I don't particularly care to know, because, as you know, all other cultures are irrelevant, uninteresting, and, frankly, just not as good. All the controls have a very well-made, chunky feel. The steering it has to be electric. It doesn't have much feeling in it, and it's very light. But actually, in this car, I kind of like that. In normal mode, it really is just like any other pedestrian vehicle. It's like a tiny crossover, really. Just a little bit bumpier than most crossovers in the market. A little bit busier ride. All right, I'm gonna take it on the highway now. The engine noise, another downside. Just when you're not pushing it, the turbo just sounds like a, I don't know, like a, dryer or something it's just oh yeah the noise is really really good now. I'm going to get killed I'm gonna first pass this man I'm going to select the fifth no that's not right I'm so used to the wrong way the fourth out of the seven fake gears aha I passed him this is quite noisy now. I'm gonna say the last time I heard this much noise from a modern car was in a like a early 2000s Honda Accord. Probably not quite as much noise as my NB Miata. Interesting point actually. This car has a zero to 60 of 7.8 seconds, which is exactly the same zero to 60 as the NB Miata. A little bit more horsepower because it's a little bit more weight, but just interesting that the performances are the same and yet this has got stripe, it's got serious tires and black wheels and a sport mode. There is another version of this car offered for the American market. This is the Nismo. The other version is the Nismo RS and that comes with the Recaro buckets, which is just stupid. These are more than grippy enough. What about the Juke R? The Juke R. The Juke R is another option if you're stupid. Oh, I'm getting erased by uh, this car here. So I'm just gonna give in. I think it's a uh, Saturn. I think I'm just gonna scare him with my big fucked up face. That's the problem with the Juke and, and, and I've liked this car a lot more than I thought I would. I mean, I think it's cute. I think it's it's cool that it's a mini Xterra, but its face will frighten small children to tears. If you're okay with that, which I am, so be it. All right, I'm gonna say something negative about this car. Shit, the engine noise I've already mentioned just sort of sounds pitiful, really. I need to do, I need to fully wind it up, but. Yeah, it just. All right, so I'm in sport mode still, but in drive, I'm letting it do the shifting. And I just came to the top of a crest there and lightly braked. It actually downshifted to engine brake. It's actually really intelligent. And then it just upshifted when I gave it. I, God damn it. Fuck! I didn't want to like this car. I didn't want to like this car at all, but that's one of my pet peeves with automatic transmissions. They never downshift, because I'm a engine braking kind of guy. I like engine braking. But honestly, if I was to buy this, I'd get it with this setup. And this car is silver. I get it in silver. What it really looks like from the outside with the silver and the black wheels and the crimson mirrors, it's a Fiat ripoff. It's the Japanese saying, look, we can fucking put a turbocharger on this shit. We can make a quirk too. We can make a quirk R. What a silly honk. So I've got it in sport mode, traction control off. It's in two wheel drive mode. I'm sitting in a standstill. There are mad people in the town back there because I've been sitting here honking in a, what looks like a monster. 
really. And I'm gonna do a, a zero to 40 here. Got my boost gauge with its four segments that I'd have to actually look down here to see. It's really cute, I, fuck, okay. All right, zero to 40. Oh yeah, torch steer. There's 40. I, I'm not old. I don't need a gigantic nav screen. I don't need to see a 3D rendition of the whole earth in my position relative to it. This screen, son of a bitch, is actually the right size. The little screen beneath it for the climate control is actually the right size. Well, since I'm cruising along afraid of deer, might as well put it in eco mode. I love the little stars. That's your Aww, level. That's how good you are. I'm good. Okay, I'm, I'm all... Hypermiling. Fuck, I'm three out of five. Four out of five. All right. Hypermiling means no sex ever. First thing, once every three months, you think about maybe having sex. But you'd rather be hypermiling. Fuck. I'm pissed off. I'm pissed off because I wanted to hate this thing. Is that a SD card reader? Yeah. That's how maps are loaded. You take the SD card out of it and you update it on your computer and then you put it back in the car. Man, they're probably just like, you know, we could do this over satellite uplink, but we're selling this card to millennials and they like to put in SD cards and take them out repeatedly. And like that clicking noise, the tick tick. I fucking hate this car because I like it too much. Damn it, damn it, fuck. Piss fucking juke cunts. I just wanna get tied up and fucked. Nismo leather daddy. Nis Nismo leather torture dungeon. Look, you downshift when you break. Oh my God, oh my God. All the things that are wrong with automatics are gone. All right, we're alone folks. We're doing the handling test. We're on the official honk track here. I'm gonna put it in manual. I doubt we'll ever exceed second gear here. Second gear being imaginary. Nice a little understeer there. You're a little bit of wine from the CVT. Oh my god, it's so chuckable and light. It's really, really playful, as I guess it should be. Damn it. This is a lot of fun. It reminds me, honestly, of my Miata. Obviously, you're way higher, so you can actually see things and see the shit that you're doing. There, I'm getting understeer there. Break turn. Wow. Yeah, that is really impressive. It's really fun to drive. It is gonna scare children. And there's a lot of features on this car that I would normally laugh at in any others, like the fake front diffuser. Or if we come around to the back, there's a fake rear diffuser. And the, the red stripe, and I just, those mirrors are just so fucking cute. And this spoiler is so cute. I mean, I, that can't be functional, but hey, if there really is a mechanical drive to the rear wheels, look at me being informative, I don't know. If there, if there is, I'm guessing if you have the option to select all time four wheel drive, there has to be, it can't be a hydraulic bullshit system like Honda's shod, could actually be useful. I don't know what's the top speed of the Nismo and, uh, Juke, I'll never find out. I don't particularly want to. These wheels, not cute, cool, actually cool. That sort of dark, gray, almost black. They're not stupid. If you were going to stance a car, might as well stance one that you're, you're not ruining, any, ruining anything. It's just a thought. Probably the only unique thought that I've contributed today. You're thinking, wow, I bet air like comes over here in like a really cool way. I bet this is all, you know, computer design. And that, that's probably just there. I wonder if they just designed it as a joke. I think that's what they did. Luckily, it's a good joke. All right, talking about the practical stuff. Got a rear wiper for when you're mudding. Oh. There we go. So, by far, or definitely 100%, the cheapest way to get yourself some Nismo floor mats. $26,000, 22 MSRP technically, and you get Nismo floor mats. If anything, just keep them, you know? But, 
there's a little bit of space back here. So the car comes in either black, which actually looks kind of good, white, haven't seen one in white, and this color. And I can tell you right now, out of the three, this is the one I would have. And they all have those crimson mirrors. Actually, this is this is the car, this is the car that I would have with the CVT and all-wheel drive and navigation and the nice stereo system. The text on a Harman Kardon speaker, very chiseled, serious. This it's the sans serif or serif, the one that like doesn't have any bullshit. That one. This one though, look at that. I mean, I don't know what company that is, but look at that. And this door. I mean, it's not handmade out of wood. Look at that. That's not fake carbon fiber. It's not fake wood. It's just plastic. Fuck. This door handle, I was talking about this earlier, actually has a very solid feel. It's a door handle that looks unique and yet is, is not bullshit. You're never going to be searching for the door handle. Ooh, 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 ooh. What I've just discovered has just sold me the car. You can't unscrew this. This is the only one that I've ever seen that you can't unscrew. And I've always thought, you know, damn, if I bought a Honda CRV with navigation, someone could just walk up and steal my antenna. And then I have to order one from Honda. And then I have like five GPS antennas in my center console for the rest of my life. I'm actually, this is not a fictional story. This has happened. These door handles, straight off the Xterra, just flipped on their side. Nice, big and chunky. And listen to this. Nice slam. All the space you need if you're slim, if you're a valid human being and you eat shit loads of kale. So these back seats, perfect if you're me and you're like on the border of being clinically underweight. And honestly, if you're not, you need to lose weight. This finish, this Alcantara, 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 Alpaca, Alcatraz is really comfortable, really like cool. It's like a very f premium feel. Yeah, I mean, no jokes under the hood other than that battery is like literally the same size as the engine block. I spent my entire life hating Nissan. There are blueprints in my room of strategic locations at the Nissan headquarters to detonate explosives. And this car is a revelation. We have an opportunity to test the off-road capability of the Juke Nismo because it does have an all-wheel drive function. I'm gonna go ahead and the all-wheel drive function. So I'm in all-wheel drive. This is the most um, difficult terrain any juke driver will ever encounter. Oh. The music you've been hearing is called Juke, or more specifically, Footwork. It's an exquisitely unique Chicago-born genre, and like it, the Nismo Juke is truly unimpeded by the past. It's a youth product that actually understands youth. It's a freaking joke, and it's a hell of a lot more interesting than a golf. which I have an unfortunate weak spot for cars that don't take themselves. Oh, shit. Well, I just avoided a deer. Okay, good time. 
to offer some David Blue expert advice. Don't have loose water bottles underneath your feet. All right, that's one. Two, they tell you when you see a deer in the road not to swerve. That's fucking dumb. Every close call I've ever had with a deer, including that one, I've swerved, and that's the reason why I haven't hit them. Now, that being said, if there's a deer standing in the middle of the road and looking right at you, and it's trying to judge which way to go, you know, that might be a, a good time to keep going. This coming from David Blue, no professional qualifications, 21-year-old male. Um, but being a young man, I do actually know everything. Uh, and I won't for always, but yeah, I do know everything. So it's convenient that I do know everything right now, especially for car reviews.